Hi there, my name is Andrew Adams from Parker Adams Boat Sales. I'm here at Port Solent this morning and I have behind me a Sea Line S34. Now, the S34 is a really interesting boat because it's the first time that I've been on an S34, but as many people will know that follow the channel, I know the Targa 34 from Fairline inside out. So it's a really great chance for me to step aboard the basically the Sea Line equivalent, see what's different between this and the Targa 34. And in many ways, the Sea Line have been so clever in what they've done with this boat in terms of the use of space. Um, as soon as you walk on the boat, it's pretty evident that it is slightly narrower than the Targa 34. So although the cockpit space is spacious and it feels quite deep, you do find that it's slightly narrower. But what you have, just like typical sea line, is really amazing uses of space in terms of storage lockers, storage compartments. So it's a really interesting boat to be able to compare the two. And there's quite a lot of differences, but equally there's some similarities too. The key similarity, of course, is that it is a, I always call it three cabin, I don't need three cabin, I need two cabin, but three distinct areas down below. Um, so you've got two sleeping areas which are separated um, by doors, so you've got some privacy on board these boats. And 34 foot boats back in the day where this boat's at 2002, the Sea Line S34 and the Targa 34 are pretty much the only boats that you could find at the time that had that, that three distinct layouts. Um, and you do get a really nice amount of space. You can see here it's a really good large seating area here and then what really sets this boat slightly apart from the Targa 34 is this rear cabin is significantly larger than the Targa 34. So I'm on my own today so I've put the GoPro attached to a guardrail on another boat here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab hold of the GoPro and then walk through the boat and come back to camera a couple of times but just give you a feeling of what this boat is all about. So I'm going to come across, grab the camera and then hopefully not fall in as I as I go down the boat. So first of all, let's have a, a walk down the side decks. Um, the side deck access on the boat is achieved from just climbing over here, so you just take the cover off. And something I would say is that the, the Targa 34 is quite, uh, sorry, I'm gonna do that a few times, call it a Targa 34. The S34 is quite a bit taller than the Targa 34, so it's quite high. And you notice that when you go downstairs into the cabin as well, where the cabin is actually quite deep. And I first noticed that on the, the Sea Line S38 Amelie that we sold, they're quite deep and when you walk down below you feel that you're going down a long long way and this S34 is very similar to that. So typical sea line you've got a really nice moulded deck here and um, the anchor um, is actually stored just underneath there so you can't see the anchor. The sea line way was always to have a sort of concealed anchor on a slightly protruded bow. You've got two controls there so up and down for the anchor and then you've got a large sun pad area here. Now there's no evidence of any straps on this, so I don't believe this is actually fitted with sun pad cushions for the front, but certainly they could be added. Um, in terms of the rest of the boat, the boat's in very nice condition. It's been recently polished and it looks very clean and tidy. Something the owner wanted me to point out was the fact that the front covers are actually just about to be replaced. So there's new windows going into those covers because they've gone slightly cloudy. You don't notice it so much today because there's a bit of dew around. As we walk around to the back of the boat, it's still got original teak on the back, um, and that's all in really nice condition. It's clearly been treated, um, it's not lifting in any places, and there's no missing corking. So it's nice to see that. You can see there the, the side profile of the boat. They're a chunky little boat, lots and lots of space. Um, this boat is powered just down there by stern drives. So the stern drives have got um, KAD 32 engines. So they're supercharged diesel engines in this. Let's just step aboard. <laughs> So as we step in, you can see that all of the cockpit upholstery has been reupholstered. Um, it's been reupholstered in a silver tex upholstery. I'm not sure the colour of it. It's a sort of a chocolatey brown, slightly light brown, um, and it looks very, very smart. And it goes very nicely with the teak in here. Just like the bathing platform, the teak in here is original, um, but it's presented really nicely. There's no wear patches, there's no areas where it's thinning, it just looks really nice. And then you've got this table, um, which is quite a clever design in that the table, that's it, folds out. It should fold out, I'm doing something wrong on this. No, it doesn't fold out, there you go, it slides out. Slides out, drops down, and then clips back together again. And you can see that then makes a much, much larger table. Um, but very cleverly, it's got this system that comes out, lifts up, and then slides back across again. I should have practiced that before I did the video, shouldn't I? I'm just gonna hold that there and pop that back in, there you go. There's a knack to it, but it's not too difficult. 
Um, in terms of engine access, engine access on this boat, I normally do this last, but I'm going to do that first on this occasion. You can leave the table in place to get access to the engines, which I think is really nice. Um, obviously, if you want to get the hatch much higher, um, then you can take the table legs off. But if you just want to quickly make sure everything's all right in there, and then you can just lift that up. And then you can see down there, nestling down there, are the twin CAD 32s. Something I really like that Sea Line did is that they made this extra lining inside the engine bay, and it means that the engine bay becomes white clean. So that engine bay really looks like a boat that's only a couple of years old. Whereas on some of the Fairlines or Princesses, where they've got the mottled gel effect, they can look a lot, lot older. Lots and lots of space down there to work around the engines, and these engines are presented in very, very nice condition. And they've had quite a lot of work done to them in the last few years, which I will detail. So let's just close that back up again. Um, the first bit of storage that I'll point out on the sea line is, I noticed there's a little sign under here that says life raft. I thought, so how on earth can they have a life raft under a seat? That doesn't make sense. And then, of course, I forgot it's a sea line. So look at the space here. You just lift that up, and you've got this massive locker space here that absolutely you'll get a life raft in, um, or just lots and lots of cleaning products, anything you want in there. And that, I would say, is absolutely class-leading in terms of uh, spaciousness um, for locker space on there. Just pop that back down again there. The helm position, um, very, very uncluttered. You've got Ray Marine equipment on here. The boat is fitted with a bow thruster. It's got an autopilot. Um, it's got a Ray Marine um, by data and then a Pathfinder radar. I haven't tested the radar to see if it works. Um, so that's something I should be doing a little later on. Um, all of your dials are in here and they're in set in this brushed aluminium effect. Overall, it's in good condition. You've got a little bit of corrosion on the corners, um, but I'd say overall it's in nice condition, but could of course be wrapped or something like that if the new owner wanted to just to freshen up the look on that. Um, the CAD 32s are, are mechanical controls. So you've got these large Volvo Penta um, controls here, but controlling this boat is really nice and simple and easy because it's just cable um, controls here. Um, and of course, with the combination of the bow thruster and the stern drives, it means you can pretty much get this boat going sideways into any berth that you like. Um, on the side here, you've got this chaise long, which runs all the way down here. And it's a really good size. I'm just gonna slip my shoes off. So this would be a good spot just to sit here with a book, looking around, you've got a full length on here, and I think actually if you're a small child you could probably sleep up here as well. So lots of nice spaciousness up here in the cockpit. You've got lighting up in the radar arch, and then for speakers, and then this silver text trim extends up around the radar arch. Back here you've got a wet bar, so you've got um, hot and cold water into the wet bar there, and then you've also got a, a fridge which is just nestling into there. The owners have taken all their things off this boat over the last couple of days, so it's really nice to see the boat in a really nice, clean and tidy position. So let's go down into the into the um, the main saloon area. Now down here, as I mentioned, it feels a lot lot lower. You've got really good headroom. If I just spin that round, um, I'm about five ten, and you've certainly got enough room. So just about a six foot person could stand down here. And then the upholstery has definitely been reupholstered in recent years. Um, I think it's a Dolce material, I think it's a faux leather, um, and it's presented very, very nicely. I really like the fact that it's a, a light colour and it feels really spacious down here. You've got a television which is mounted up on the wall, and then here on your distribution panel, all of your lights and systems, and then a Kenwood CD player just there, so that could easily be upgraded for a Fusion if you wanted to, uh, which would of course then give you Bluetooth control through the existing speaker system. Storage lockers on either side, so to put glasses or anything that you wanted in there, and then this nice teak table uh, with an inlaid compass rose in there looks really, really smart. Um, there's additional storage, if I just lift that up, um, you've got a little storage locker in there. I might be tempted to turn that into the bin, actually. I think that may even be the bin. Um, so that would good storage in there. And then if I spin the camera around, you'll see the galley area. I like the light wood. I think it feels very, very modern down here. A lot of the newer boats have gone to this light wood effect, and I think it makes this boat feel very fresh. Um, and on here, you've got a gas oven. Uh, you've got a gas two-burner hob, which is just under there. And then lots and lots of storage, really nice deep lockers in here for glasses, cups, mugs, um, your crockery in there. And then in here, I even found a toaster. So a toaster and a kettle in there as well. So a good amount of storage on the boat. And then there's a fridge in there. Let's deal with the front cabin first. 
Front cabin wise, you've got a slightly offset bed, but you do have good access to get round the, almost to the side there. So the Targa 34 definitely gives you slightly less access on there, but you've got an offset large double bed. Um, I should have said the boat is fitted with Eberspatcher heating, so you can see a vent down there as well. The light wood running all the way down. You've got a good light vent up there. Curtains, step ups, and just a nicely presented cabin space. There's a television mounted up on the wall and then another difference between this and the Targa 34s is that you have a Jack and Jill arrangement for the, the heads. So if I open this door you have your own personal access to get into the bathroom. So you can close that back up again and of course you can also get access from this side as well. Let's move away into the, the rear cabin. So in the rear cabin, again, nicely presented. Something that I like the fact the owners have done on this is they've upgraded the upholstery on the little seat in this cabin. So many people do, they reupholster here and then they leave that as the old ones. They don't think it matters. It always does, I always say this. It's great that the owners have taken that seriously and upgraded that as well, because it does make a big difference to make everything nice and, and continuous on the boat. This cabin is definitely bigger than the 34. Um, you've also got the infill cushions there to make this up into a really large double berth. But at the moment you can see it set up as two singles, ideal for children in there. You've got a large vanity unit here with a mirror. So that's a nice size space in there. And then these little stay fast catches there. Cupboard space all the way along. So everywhere you look on this boat, there's cupboard space. These aren't particularly deep, but they're ideal for perhaps rolled up t-shirts, etc. And then you've got hanging space in there as well. So there's a rail at the top there. So as we come back out, good size spacious rear cabin. In terms of access to uh, more storage, you can lift up the, the floor here and you've got this massive storage locker. Um, all of your perhaps food, tins, things like that can go into there. But of course you can get access to the bilge as well through there. So it's, it's good to be able to see the storage space and also bilge access. And again, if we lift that up, you can see the top of the diesel tank there and that's got an inspection hatch in it as well. Just pull that back down. There's another hatch here. I haven't looked at this one. Let's see what's in here. Okay, so in there you've got a grey water tank and an additional bilge pump. So their grey water tank is where the shower discharges into, and there's a bilge pump in there as well. So that's the interior of the S34. Let's just come back up again. And I will just have a sit down and spin the camera around. So as always, thanks for watching another walkthrough tour. This one has been a 2002 Sea Line S34. It's presented absolutely beautifully. There's lots of upgrades. I really like the cockpit upholstery, particularly the, the Dolce pit uh, upholstery down below as well. Really, really nice boat. Now we haven't taken this boat out yet, but we're going to be taking it out to do drone work in the next few weeks. Powered by the Volvo KAD32 engines. They're supercharged, they're turbocharged, they should give really nice performance on quite a small four-cylinder lump. So thanks as always for watching. Please do remember to like and subscribe to the channel. And because we're getting close to the Southampton Boat Show, please come and see me and Jonathan. We've got a stand in Ocean Hall at the Southampton Boat Show and we're running an excellent competition. We're actually giving away our brokerage services completely free of charge to one lucky winner. So please come and say hi and we look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks as always for watching.